Greetings, you fellow players of the challenge run we call life, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alatherex, and of course, welcome back to Difficulty 15 of the challenge run, where today we're going to be making our first, I would say, stronger drone. Today, we're going to be building a hovercraft, which is most likely going to end up using an advanced cannon, probably something like a belt fed loader, so really fast fire rate for limited periods of time, because although we're pretty good at disabling enemies, as you can see here, we're just lacking that sheer bulk damage. The plasma's very good at knocking off just chunks, so weapons tend to get disabled early on. Our planes have EMP and fragments and everything else, which can be really helpful as well. And I'm now noticing our helicopters have stopped firing for reasons I'm not entirely sure of. So clearly, we also need some bug fixes. On the upside, they're definitely tanky. Why have they stopped for- Oh, resources. That was it. I was messing around with resources before I randomly got attacked. Never super happy to see enemies with flak. Oh yeah, that plane is definitely destroyed. So, three, no, two of our planes have been taken out already. At least out of the sky. The helicopters are absolutely fine, and we have tore some chunks into the side of this thing. Oh, that was beautiful. The enemy does have a lot of surge protectors, the EMP is doing nothing, but it looks like we have taken out the weapon just because of the chunks we've tore into its armor. I really love plasma, and we need to build a bigger plasma drone later. Again, the copters are just here as distractions. They only cost like 16, 17,000 resources total, which is nothing in this mode. So I'm thinking probably about this big, no bigger than this, just because again, I do want to stick with as many small drones as possible, and this way we could have two of these, one at the front, one at the back, is kind of my thinking at the moment, without having to do too much work to our weird raft I've built. I might need to sacrifice one of the copters though for this first one, because belt-fed loaders are expensive, and I do love railguns. Really rapid-fire railguns can actually be utterly catastrophic, even in the uh, water mode, especially if we have two of these things. That's going to be a lot of bulk damage delivered very quickly. Or I could just go with normal autoloaders. But I love railguns, I really do. Ooh, or I could have this thing with a spinal mount weapon, so rather than having it on a turret, I could just have it facing forwards and make sure this craft always points at the enemy. I never do that with drones, and now I'm very tempted. It would make it more vulnerable, but it would allow me to be a bit cheaper and allow the Tetris to be more protected. So, I'm making a weird carapace for this thing, but still. It's gonna be a railgun. It's gonna fire, I think, around about 400 rounds per minute. It's not using belt-fed loaders, which is actually making this whole thing a lot cheaper, if a lot chunkier. And it's not gonna be a very agile craft. It's gonna simply point at the enemy and fire away. It's firing heat shells, which means when they hit the target, little fragments go inside the target and cause havoc. Now, this was really good in the land mode with very small craft that even the 100mm rounds heat work just fine. I am under no illusion that things are bigger here, so it's probably not going to be strong enough, but I want to see if it is, and if not, we might go to Fragment, or Pure Kinetic, or a whole host of other things. Now to actually make it look a bit more drone-like and a bit less like just a block of metal, with a weird shape. Oh my god, that is the cutest thing I have ever seen! Look at its little arms! Oh, what are you? The remora- oh, you are so cute. Issue is, I don't really have anything that can really attack you. Ooh. Well, at least we can test out our uh, advanced cannon on something else. I'm seeing a problem with the accuracy, so that's nice. Hit the thing! Thank you! Hit the thing better! Smack it in the face! Stop firing other things! I mean, yeah, you'll- God, the accuracy is dreadful. Uh, note to self, your detection systems are currently not good enough for a railgun. Plasma? Sure. Missiles? Definitely. This thing? No. I'm scoring a few hits now. Okay, let's see. Is the Hesh actually t Sorry, the Heat's taking out anything important? Yes, it is, actually. That's a fair bit of cram stuff. It's knocked out a chair, so I'm assuming I've killed a pilot. Okay, I'm seeing explosions. Still not... majorly good, though. I mean, there's another explosion then. I 
actually, it's not as bad as I expected. It's not game-winningly strong, but... St oh, yeah, there's still a submarine, isn't there? Um, where is the sub? Oh, did it get killed by the plasma? The plasma was firing at it. Now, plasma does less damage than water, but... You know what? Have a swim. You've earned it. No, I think the sub's still there. Maybe it's just too damaged to fire back. Note to self, we need torps. Also, this needs to be fixed. I now realise what it looks like. It looks like Snom, the uh, Pokemon. The if, if I'm saying the name right, the little bug thing. The ice thing. Snom with a railgun. Is it Snom? That sounds wrong. I just really like heat shells. I think that's just what it is. It's just so fun to see all these random components falling off. It's like a loot box of damage. Heat is a loot box of damage. You never know what you're going to get, and it's always a gamble. And it's always a scam. So far, I'm actually just surprisingly happy with the heat. Yeah, this thing's controls are all messed up though at the moment, so definitely need a lot of work done still. Very happy with that. Hey everyone, Future Lathrix here, as is tradition with these From the Depths videos, just here to say that this is by far my favourite video I have ever recorded. I absolutely love this challenge mode and I'm really hoping you enjoy it as well. I have recorded the first two parts before putting out the first part, so I really do hope that went down well. I know that the full playthroughs are now what you expect, and don't worry, we will be going back to those in the future. In the meantime, likes and comments help out so, so much, because these long playthroughs, I swear everything I do, the algorithm doesn't like at the moment, but all that attention and all that interaction really helps out so much. So with that, back to the past, building over the water, under the water, and sometimes like a normal boat. Really wasn't happy overall with that craft, so in terms of its weapon, I'm happy with that, but everything else, really, really unhappy. So I'm going to build it again from scratch, well at least all the armour and everything else. Hopefully this time I can make it less chunky. Honestly, it had no need to be as weirdly big and kind of like rectangular as it was. Okay, difficulty 20, and I think I am happy with this thing for now. Definitely looks very automated, it can definitely fit some stuff on the top. All of the detection systems are installed, we have the munition warners and some anti-missiles are added to this thing, so now it costs just over double, in fact actually a fair chunk over double, one of the helicopters. Not quite as much as three of them, but yeah, hopefully it's worth it. I'm going to make a second one of these, then we'll make the submarine. That's the current plan. Then after we've made the sub, we'll once again upgrade the main base. That's the plan. That's a lot of innards currently spilling out. Well, it's going right for this thing. And down it goes. Yep, it couldn't withstand the uh, heat. Pun half intended. Been attacked by a lot of things like this since hitting difficulty 20. Okay, it's dead. All return back to base. The piercer over there, worth 150,000 resource. It's currently... Try and take out my copters. Come on, heat shells hit a proper spot. That'll be great. Like, you know, anywhere near the actual gun. The very suspicious looking gun. There we go. Yep, the heat did it, I think. The EMP hit just after it stopped firing. I now realise I was saying how I keep designing craft which disable enemies rather than actually destroy them, and then I use a heat railgun whose only purpose is to, is to disable targets. Maybe when I make the next one I should use something other than heat, but I just love heat shells. It's just so fun, even if it's silly at this low gauge. Still, a victory nonetheless. I should, after this fight, have enough resource for the second cannon drone. Then we can start work on the sub. I've just got painful weapons. 
I also now kind of wish I was letting myself um, capture vehicles because, my god, every single vehicle is in the perfect capturing position every single fight. The Wasp. We have so many more shots now. Still need to work on their aim, though, I've noticed. Especially against flyers. The plasma's doing well. I think they actually managed to take out all of our planes. Oh, except for one. It did have a flat cannon. That was better. That time, they completely removed the enemy's missiles. Ooh, some fantastic plasma hits. What actually is this, anyway, other than just really cool looking? A wyvern, okay. Or wyvern. Or bob. It disintegrated so gracefully. The Marlin. I thought I recognised it. Lots of paper cuts. I really love our current setup. It's just so fun to watch. I might just go straight into difficulty 30, honestly. I was hoping to find at least one resource zone because I want to do so much work to the craft. And honestly, it's mostly cosmetic. I didn't mind really harvesting a lot more resource, but... I see no resource zones. I've been here for a good while. Here's a weird POV. Inside an enemy ship that's being hit by heat. What an absolutely gorgeous ship. Okay, yeah, we're definitely going to go to the next difficulty now. Ooh, there's another enemy, though, and I've just been slowly wandering towards it. Not ideal. Full reverse. We can go backwards as fast as we can go forwards in this thing. Eh, probably a little bit slower because of drag, but still. Ah, the one and only coffin nail. Oh, that heat just ripped it apart. Yeah, it was still flying without its butt, but still. Are the planes even going to get there to fire their missiles in time? Nope. Oh no, they still fired their missiles, just that nothing. Fight after fight after fight at the moment. I've also added some repair tentacles to the copters, each of them only have three each, but it's enough because what I've noticed is they keep getting taken out because of the obvious weak points they have. The tail section and the propellers are both so vulnerable, and as soon as either of those go, it just drops into the water. So, with the ability to heal each other for that minor bit of damage, they do stay up a lot longer. Now, any direct shot that goes into the core, that's unsalvageable. It doesn't matter how much healing, it's just not going to happen, it's going to plummet into the water in that time. And I think that was a really smart idea to do. And that's Samore. Oh, my poor base! You look so bad! I don't think I have full control over you. Okay, let's get to that red portal. We've clearly been here too long at spawning in enemies way too often. I'm actually getting too many resources from it, so... Move! I honestly thought this was Steel Striders when I first saw it, so this is the Thunder Child. So many designs have been changed, or brand new ones, since I last played the, the uh, main campaign. But yeah, really thought it was Steel Striders. I guess it doesn't really have, like, crenellations and the uh, more castle-like aesthetic, but from a distance, and with it using Cram, I really thought it was. Looks like the internal damage is starting to stack up. That's a lot of stuff which is important for their weapons. It 
It's a shame you can't use plasma underwater. Well, you can, but the damage knockoff is huge. Because I, I would love a submarine that uses plasma. Just a random thought as I was seeing the plasma explosions. Please hit that final weapon. I don't even know if the small EMP is doing anything to these craft, honestly. Once again, disabled and perfect to capture. Why have I made the ultimate capturing co um, comp when I can't capture? Why can't I talk either? I do it for a living. Well, it's going to be weird, but it's time to start building the sub, and I'm going to be holding it underwater, of course, so... Yeah, just weird. So here's something I've never actually used before, the sonar decoy. The sonar decoy uses engine power to produce loud sounds in a pattern that draws sonar-guided torpedoes towards it. That could be really interesting. Or we could have missiles, which then have decoys on them. Then they get thrown out if a torpedo gets too close to us. But I think for now, because it's a lot cheaper, I might just go with these. Again, I've never used them before. And just add them to the fins or something like that. Maybe I'll add a large fin at the back of the craft. And hopefully torps will hit that rather than the small core of this thing. I want to keep this thing under 40,000 resources, if possible. 50,000 at most, so then it's uh, similar to the railgun craft, which is just below 50,000. I think that'll be alright. Honestly, I'm not too unhappy with this. So we currently have a couple of torpedoes on the front. The AI isn't set up at all. I'm trying to use rudders for roll and everything, which I think will work out okay, as long as we're moving, which I think we will. So once again, I'm going to just shove these on the very end of this craft. Now I was saying that the roll is there. No, because I also have roll here, so that should be fine. How do these even exactly work? Oh, okay, so we can add more uh, power per second. For now, let's leave it as the default. We'll see what happens when we actually get into a fight. We'll probably eventually move on over to things like um, distraction torpedoes and stuff like that anyway. So the next question is, do I want to give this thing actual missiles? And the answer is yes. We definitely want actual missiles so we can be useful in normal fights. So that means we cannot be under the main fortress. Because that means we fire the missiles at the start of the fight, we destroy the butt of our own craft. Which is not something you really want to do. You can add a little section here as well to make it look a bit more interesting. Yeah, I quite like it. I'm not too sure about these little side pieces. I don't know why I added these, but... It's just me, isn't it? One day I'll build something and it's gonna look like the real world equivalent. But until then, spiky bits. One day I swear I'll actually pay attention. Okay, good, the uh, sub still docked for a second there. I thought it was undocked. Ooh, the Dawn Cutter. Wow, well it was expensive. You can see the cost going away then. Bizarre for heat. Wow. I don't know what exactly that was that I just hit, but yeah, that just went up. I'm assuming batteries, because, yeah, being able to warp is very expensive. Heat is such a weird damage type. If you don't counter it, it can eradicate you. But it isn't that difficult to counter. At least it didn't used to be. It's been changed so many times. Well. Oh, look, my torps! <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I have hooked up the um, torpedo. It's fantastic. Lovely. So it should be trying to get to about 40, or is it 30? One of the two. Okay. All seems to be functioning correctly. So let's spawn in a... Okay, first look, so everything seems to be working fine. Let's spawn in a, a casket bolt. Make sure its combat things are working properly. Wow, did not expect those missiles to one-shot the casket bolt. Um, oh look, it's a coffin nail with more health. So it should try and circle the enemy at quite a large distance. Ah, oh, it looks like it's tails wagging almost, like a proper fin. Cute. I guess it is a fins I've kind of built there. Long reload time on those, yep. Okay, there they go again. Takes a few seconds and they breach the surface. Maybe I should have it so it's always looking at the target, because, yeah, that's a problem. I don't want to add too many fins and make them super agile. I'd rather than pack more of a punch. Which, as you can tell, they do. 
Okay, there's one thing I might change when I get back. So, do you have any submarines? Sure. Whoa, you've got a huge submarine. What even is that? Wow. What? Oh my god, that is one of the best things I've seen. That is so cool. Is he arguing with the other one? <laughs> That's really awesome. Oh my god. The designers that make the campaign stuff are just phenomenal. One day, maybe I'll be slightly in their league, but certainly that's not today. Either way, our torps fired. That's all you really want to check there. Maybe more of a delay is needed, but okay. Didn't really do all that much damage either. So the torps need to be bigger. The missiles are fine, but make sure we're actually targeting the enemy more. And other than that... Yeah, for a cheap little uh, sub, which now only costs 29,000, I am pretty happy with this thing. You're going to be a nuisance, and I'm going to have multiple of you. Well, looks like they're going to be tested straight away. So they are getting information about the enemy's whereabouts from the other craft in our little fleet. Ooh, what are you? The readout. Okay, note to self, maximum range for the missiles needs to be adjusted because they did not reach the target, I think. A good thing is, a lot of these flying enemies won't be able to even see the subs. It's going to make them very nasty to try and take out. Okay, very happy with the missiles. The subs are very slow, so they're going to just stick around the main base for most of the fight, I imagine. You know, you lot never hit each other until I gave you the ability to heal each other, and now you're constantly hitting each other. Keep my eyes on you, because you're being very weird. Okay, there we go. Three subs, two hovercraft, three planes. When did they get destroyed? Anyway, three planes and three copters. Uh, I'll quickly rebuild the flyers as well. We have a proper swarm here. Uh, any portals? No? Okay, I need to get to higher difficulty again. Honestly, since the rebalance, this has been way more fun, but also one side effect is it's been way more resource heavy in the early difficulties. I really expected us to get way less resources. I've stopped at two resource zones now, maybe three, I think two. Either way, I didn't expect to have this much. The resource zones also seem to be giving more than they used to as well. I don't want to out-resource the game too much, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna run now towards at least two red portals if possible. Well they did fire them, so that's a lot of guaranteed damage heading towards the enemy. Oh, please don't hit the copter. Oh, looks like low health. Yeah, so the subs are really good. Yeah, I need to change all their weapons then. They exploded them because they reached the end of their lifespan. Adding regulators increases their lifespan. I thought they'd run out of fuel first. No, they don't because torps are super, super fuel efficient. Still, the victory nonetheless is mostly from the plasma and the hesh and the heat, but still, can I please stop saying hesh? Not going for that resource zone. We're going to continue to try and find a portal. A blue portal would be ideal. A red is acceptable. It's difficult to get beauty shots with subs. So, all of the copters are in the water. None of them are dead, they're just in the water. Both of the hovercraft are absolutely fine. Uh, one of the planes is still flying around somewhere, and the subs haven't been touched. The copters did exactly what I wanted them to do, distracted most of their weapons for such a long time. I am tempted to change a lot about the subs, but honestly, they were perfectly efficient during that fight, especially for their cost. Goodbye to the 300k Alcazar. Well, although they're through in the water, none of them died. The copters, again, I'm really happy with. I'm actually pretty happy with a lot of this stuff. Weird. Crossbones! Okay, then, well, our little planes are doomed. <laughs> this thing's pretty good with Santier. Unless you score some good hits early on. Why are we missing so badly? What's going on there? Come on, hit the guns already, please. 
Now at least the flak has a fairly limited range, so it's not hurting us yet. The missiles are just just out of range. Again, things spawn so far away. Okay, scoring more hits now. Stop hitting the bridge. There is almost nothing there. It's probably going to start broadsiding soon, which isn't really ideal. I'm currently running away towards that red portal anyway. So if things go really bad, I can just run. That's not great. Seeing lots of things being shredded off, but all the weapons seem to be online still. Did you just take out a plane with a cram? <laughs> That's just mean. And a bit overkill, quite frankly. Hit like there, please. Hopefully the missiles are in range now, because they could potentially turn the tide. Well, a couple of them hit, hit where I wanted to, a few of them just hit completely useless sections. Did almost half a million damage now with the uh, heat. Ah, so keep firing at everything but the heat craft, please. A little plane. Okay, some of the guns are now showing some serious signs of wear and tear. The problem is there's a lot of spice armor, I think, in the crossbones, which does counter heat. The shards don't like traveling through air. Oh, it looks like maybe detection's off, because that aiming is really weird. Our resources are down. Oh, incoming torps. Beautiful timing there. Against wooden armor, that's just chewing through. Fantastic. Now, of course, the crossbones does actually have a pretty decent chunk of heavy armor in the very core, as you can see. That's where the heat needs to hit. That's where all the AI is stored. Doubt it's going to target under the water, though. Wow. So, that took out everything except for the three subs. One of them did take a hit, and one of the heat cannons. We ran out of resources. I was about to start sacrificing some of my craft to feed the weapons, and it finally went down. That was insane. Difficulty 35, and straight away we have the anvil. So another really big target straight away. I'm currently one helicopter down, I had to simply destroy it to repair everything after the crossbones fight, and I really want that resource zone right behind you, mate. If you could just move, that would be lovely. Must have scored a good hit there versus one of our um, hovercraft, because that hovercraft is not getting out of the water. Okay, good, the missiles are finally getting through its point defence. Should be seeing some torps soon as well. They're going to help out a lot. That's it. Keep firing at the helicopters, which you cannot hit very well. Oh, I'm guessing that's what hit one of our hovercraft. I'm going to make a run for that resource zone. It finally turned around, which is all we really needed. Now hitting all the vitals. Hitting that front, this fight, I think it just took 10 minutes. And it was just a matter of very little damage being done on both sides. They couldn't hit our flyers, they can't target our subs, we were just hitting blocks of metal with huge amounts of space armor. Leave us alone! Oh, 
Oh, interesting. You're making a nuke, aren't you? Yep, you are definitely making a nuke. Please don't allow that thing to make a nuke. Of all the things I would like to hit me today, it's not a nuke. In fact, I can't think of anything I would like to hit me. But especially not a nuke. Oh, Christ, please actually target where it's going to be, not where it is. Your detection systems are set up for this, I'm fairly certain. There we go, okay, a lot of good hits them. I honestly thought that would be it. This thing is tough, and it looks so majestic. It's not really doing that much damage, though, so... As long as it doesn't get to spawn a nuke, I think we're fine. There we go. Difficulty 30 plus is rough, apparently. Well, I'm going to call the video here. We're two helicopters down and three of the small planes. Everything else, except for the adventure raft, that is the Minecraft, is now back to full health. We have a full stock of ammo. We have a full stock of energy. We're okay. We're safe. We're in difficulty 35. Things are so much more difficult than I remember. And I am loving this game mode with this challenge. So if you've enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. In the next episode, I swear we will improve our main vehicle. Look, look, I started putting stuff down. I was going to add more.